Hi, I'm Alistair Coombs. I'm a dyslexic specialist teacher. I work in central London and uh, I work as a SENCO and inclusion coordinator. And quite a lot of my time is taken up by uh, statement applications. And we're going to talk today a little bit about uh, why they exist and if you think your child needs as an educational statement, what to do about it. Okay? So, uh, what is a statement? Um, you might hear this banded around the place a bit. What is a statement? A statement is a way of funding a child who would normally, in the olden days, go to a special school quite often, but for them to be included in a mainstream school, a mainstream classroom, uh, the local education authority will fund that child a certain amount of money each year to help them access the curriculum. There are lots of different types of statements, there are lots of different reasons why you can get statements, but for our purposes really we're looking at um, what we call learning and cognition, so for children who aren't reading and writing uh, at a level that their age, at a level they should be at their age. In terms of dyslexia, um, it's quite rare these days to get a statement of educational needs if you're dyslexic. However, it doesn't mean that you can't. Um, and uh, I think it would be quite useful to talk about why they exist. In 1981, the government and then in those days, led by our Maggie, um, thought it was a good idea to uh, phase out special schools because they felt that children weren't achieving to, the, to their potential and that they were being uh, very much sidelines in education. And they introduced statements as a way of reintroducing these, these children who normally would go to special schools into mainstream schools. And there was a process to go through it. Nowadays, the situation with statements is a little bit more uh, tricky. LEAs have a finite amount of resources and because of that they don't tend to hand out statements very easily. They go through a, something called a, a code of practice that was set up in 2001 after the Warnock report and it stipulates the, the different, if you like, hurdles you have to overcome for, you, for a child to be granted a statement. Um, and we'll be going through those little bits in, uh, later on today. Uh, it's a process that, can take, that takes up to 26 weeks. Um, so it's half a year and a lot can happen in half a year. Um, there's an awful lot of ev evidence that schools have to gather and there's an awful lot of uh, paperwork that has to be collated for, these, uh, for, this, for the statements. I think it's very important to understand standardised scores and centiles or percentiles. These are talked a lot about in special needs and it's one of the criteria that come up time and time again when looking at statementing and, and uh, uh, whether people fall into these criteria. Here you have what we call the bell curve or um, uh, standardised scores. Each one of these guys represents one out of a hundred people of a cross range of ability. Now this could be shoe size, it could be height, it could be weight or it could be intelligence or, or reading, spelling ability. Some people are going to be very very good, some people are going to be average and we have a lot more average and some people are going to be very very poor. So there are 100 matches here, and this match here would be the 99th centile, and the match down here would be the first centile. Okay. An average range would be the guys in the middle. Sixty, there will be 68 people who have an average score in something, and this ranges from a standardised score of 85 to 115. When you say someone's got an IQ of 100 and they're average, 
they'll be there. And there's 15 points between the two. Above 115 is above average, up to superior. Below 85 is below average. Now, if you're applying for a statement, you need to have your, your child's needs to be in the first or second centile quite often. This range is, this really is a very, very low score. And again, in different boroughs, they have different criteria. In Westminster, for instance, they're quite, they're quite generous. They do the first and second centile. However, in Camden, it tends to be just the first centile. And in other boroughs, it's just below the first centile. So it's 0.5 centile. So very, very low scores to fit the criteria. And as we know, these change from day to day as well. Some days your child will have a good day, and some days they'll have a very bad day. So if you think your child falls in these centiles, or you've got evidence to show, either from an educational psychologist, which is normally where it's from, or from a speech and language therapist, or from indeed a specialist teacher like myself, if you have that evidence, then it's certainly worthwhile looking at going into statementing and talking to your school about it. You need to talk to your SENCO in the school, and every school should have a SENCO, and ask them whether they would support a, an application for a, for a statement. You can do this by yourself, and it can be your, a parental prerogative to do it. However, it's, I think it's much, much easier if you have the school on side because they'll have a lot of evidence as well to support your case. OK, so what are the different stages? Well, first of all, like we said, you have to, if they fall into the centre, that's the first thing. They fall in this, this band. So let's say that your child is there. What do you do? OK, well, first of all, you have to make sure that they're on the special needs register and they're at a at a level called School Action Plus. Now, School Action Plus means they have outside agencies working with them. And if you have had an educational psychologist working with you, um, then you should be on School Action Plus. That may also mean a speech and language therapist and an OT as well. And the school then, and in, con in, in conjunction with yourselves, the school then have to put in place a programme of remediation to see if we can move the child from where they're at to towards an, a more average mark. If after six months or two terms in school of having this help, if your child hasn't made the progress required, this is evidence to show that their need is long-term, severe and complex. In other words, it's not a high incident special need, it's something that schools don't come across very often. The idea behind that is that schools should be able to cope with a high incident special need. But if they're severely dyslexic or severely dyspraxic, I think we can class that as a, as a complex need. And that, as we know, dyslexia and dyspraxia and things like this are long-term. They're lifelong conditions. So you've done that, you've gathered the evidence, no one's moved. What now? or well, now you can apply for a statement. Point number four, the school will fill in an application for a statement. Okay. This is the initial asking form. It's called an SA1 and it's quite a long form. It's normally about 15 to 20 pages long. Well, they'll have all the evidence. This would include reports from bodies such as EPs or speech and language therapists detailing whereabouts the difficulties lie with the child. Um, it'll also have things such as IEPs, individual education plans. These are vital to show that the work has been done to try and uh, help the child out of, this, out of their difficulties. And um, it'll also have your views and the, the child's views as well. It does take quite a long time and quite often teachers are very put upon and find it very difficult to fill, fill in all these, all these forms, but you have to be persist and keep going with it. Okay. And within three weeks, you'll get to, to the fifth point, or the fifth part of it, where 
uh, a pre-panel will look at the evidence and see whether it meets the, their criteria. Now you can get hold of their criteria if you ring the SEN uh, department in your LEA. Um, they may be, they may not be quite so forthcoming, but certainly persist asking for that because it's very important that, that the criteria do fit with theirs. That then will go to panel, and then after panel, well, they'll decide whether this, um, the, the, uh, the child should receive a statement or how big that statement is. Quite often, if, you th if you're notified that they'll go to panel, it is a very clear indication that they may well get a statement. However, um, they can go to panel and not get a statement, and the LEA can decide that the criteria aren't met. Then there's another period where of, co of collecting evidence, where they collect evidence to make the statement of need. This, this again can take a bit of time, and again another big form to fill in an SA2 in Westminster, and sometimes it's called something else in other, other boroughs, sometimes an Appendix B. Um, once all this evidence is collated, and this will include medical evidence and evidence from social services if there is involvement there, and evidence from speech and language therapists, EPs, and the school. Once that's all collated, they can put together a draft statement which is sent out to you and the school. If you're happy with that and what the LEA are offering, they will then produce a full statement which will will show, which will give you the amount of money that the school will be funded. Quite often at this stage, um, when the, with the draft statement, you'll find that they may not be offering very much money at all and you might want to negotiate with them. But again, this will slow the process down as, as well. And I have had cases where it's taken a year arguing with the NLEA to try and get what the school thought was the right level of need, was the right level of support for the need of the child. However, this isn't always the case. So, once that's, once that's ratified and signed, a statement is issued, and then funding, a funding stream is given, and it's funded through the school. Again, all LEAs are different, and they might fund it in a different manner. Some LEAs will ask the school to support the statement by a certain percentage, maybe even up to 25% of the money for the statement will come from the school's budget. Um, however, not all LEAs are like this. Some do give full statements and provide a fair amount of money. This will then continue for the, for the child until they're 16. Each year there will be a review and that time if the child has made enough progress, the statement will be withdrawn. Sometimes this happens and it can be difficult. Um, so it's very, very important to be involved with the reviews and, get, and be involved as much as you can in getting what's right and proper for your child. If everything goes very well, um, perhaps in three months from beginning to end, you'll get a statement issued However, it's not always this easy. Quite often, there may be a problem with the school. Maybe they don't have the evidence that's needed to produce, to put forward in the statement. Perhaps you can't have an EP from the LEA to come and see your child and assess them because quite a lot of the time, there aren't enough educational psychologists to go around. And they have an awful lot of other children to see as well. So what do you do there? Well, you can get a, an independent EP report and you don't have to go through the school to apply for statements. You can do it as a parent and it has been successful. But you'll need a lot of help with that and it's difficult without the school's report. It's very important at this stage to Im involve the parent partnership. Each LEA will have a parent partnership. It's very important to get in touch with them and seek their advice. They're very, very helpful, and they're indep an independent body as well. So they don't work for the LEA, they basically work for parents. 
So they're very, very good people to be on the side with. If you have got the school support and they have got the evidence, but still the LEA perhaps aren't, aren't are refusing this at panel, you can reapply after six months saying there's still a problem. If though you feel that, that there still is a problem before that six months, you can appeal against the decision for the panel. And there, there's, a, there's a tribunal that you can go through. And unfortunately, this is an area where education has become particularly litigious. And you, you may end up having to sort, seek um, the help of a solicitor. And there are plenty of people around who are very good. It's really great if that doesn't happen, but often you do have to play quite hard, unfortunately. And if you believe your child is in this area and fits the criteria, and you believe that they really do need this help at school, then, then you have, that's what you have to do. Um, LEAs have a, I think, have a very, very limited budget. And I know, especially in the present um, economic climate, those budgets are gonna get tighter and tighter. And so you do have to really fight, I'm afraid. Um, uh, but there is, there's nothing stronger than the, the love of parents and mothers to fight for these kind of things. Um, and if you need any advice, there's, there are lots of websites that are listed below that can certainly point you in the right direction and to keep your morale up. Um, it is what your child deserves and it is what we pay our taxes for. So it's very important you keep that in mind while going through this process, because it can be a very long, drawn out process. And very good luck if you're going to do it.